So in my mind, when I think of great creators of any sort, whether it be great artists, great musicians, great writers, whatever, they always fall into two categories. First, there's the Nirvana, Harper Lee, My Bloody Valentine, Jeff Buckley, Portishead type of creator. For one reason or another, whether it's because of a premature death or simply by choice, these individuals only release a relatively small amount of work to the general public, but the works they do put out are hailed as masterpieces and they leave a mark never to be forgotten. Because of the fact that these folks put out so little, it's really hard to forget about anything that they worked on. In the case of Nirvana, for instance, they only put out three studio albums before Kurt Cobain's passing. They did put out a B-Sides collection and live albums, including my favorite work from them, but the point is that they weren't a band for very long. And so because of that, there is only so much Nirvana that you can listen to. And so what that means is that the little bit of work we do have from them is cherished and loved. Because there is so little, everything that they ever put out is considered essential. You can't tell someone to skip a Nirvana record, because if you do, then you're cutting out like a third of their legacy. In the same vein, Harper Lee only put out one book, or two if you want to consider an early draft of To Kill a Mockingbird that was paraded as a sequel, but To Kill a Mockingbird is considered one of the most important novels ever written. And so if you write one masterpiece, and that's all you do, then it's really hard to screw up your legacy. And I think that's important to remember, that if you fall into this first camp of creators, where you do a limited amount of work, and you want to be considered a quote unquote great artist, or a great musician, or a great writer, then you have to make sure that the work you do is absolutely rock solid. In other words, you are going for quality as opposed to quantity in the truest sense possible. So let's take a look at the second camp of great creators. These are people who make a lot of stuff over a long period of time. I'm talking about people like Stephen King, Trent Reznor, Billy Corgan, Grant Morrison, David Bowie, people who are just prolific. Basically, all these people do is they just make a ton of stuff and they just keep on doing it. Stephen King is the best example of this, I think. Every year, he comes out with one or two books, and he's done this for 50 years now. So what that means is that you could realistically read everything that Harper Lee ever put out across her whole entire life in a single day, but most people will never read everything Stephen King has written just because there is so much of it. Even the most hardcore King fans I know haven't read every novel of his. The dude's a factory, and he just pumps stuff out. He's written about how he writes every day, and he has the back catalog to prove it. And like I mentioned, I would consider Trent Reznor to be another example of this. At this point in time, from what I understand, the dude treats music making like a normal 9 to 5 and just goes to work consistently every day. So across his 35 year career in making music, he's put out 11 albums with 9 Inch Nails, plus EPs, live albums, remix albums, plus he's come out with about two or so movie scores per year for the last 10 or 15 years, plus he's produced work for other musicians, plus he's played countless live shows over the years. The dude is crazy productive, and I have a huge amount of respect for him. But the problem with this approach of creating a ton of stuff is that because these people come out with so much work, the overwhelming majority of it slips through the cracks and is forgotten about. So I am biased because Nine Inch Nails is my favorite band, so I love most of what Trent Reznor has produced, but even I haven't listened to everything that he's ever put out. And if you're a more casual fan, then you might know an album like The Downward Spiral, which is considered his masterpiece by a lot of people, but you probably haven't listened to a record like The Slip, which is a shame because it's a really great album. But that's exactly my point, is that when a creator does a great quantity of work, then there comes a point where you literally just do not have the time to go through all of it. Going back to Nirvana, I think it's really easy to get a grasp on that band because they only have a handful of works. You can spend a little bit of time listening to them and go, oh, I get this, I get what they were going for. But if you're trying to get into David Bowie, the dude released 26 studio albums across his lifetime, and they're all varied and all over the place, and he tackles different genres and different themes, and so there's a lot there. And so it's not something that you can really get into in just one afternoon. And so that's how you end up with where you have these memes where it's like, here's how you get into David Bowie. All this really is, is this an attempt to break down a prolific creator's body of work into digestible, smaller bites. And so I think that in addition of having much of your work forgotten about, prolific creators have the problem of potentially putting out less than stellar work, which can kind of hurt them in a lot of ways. So let me explain. I think that if you asked me to write one good short story in a week, I could do it. I have some ideas floating around, so I think I could string some of them together and come up with something that was of a high quality. But if you asked me to write one good short story a week for 40 years, that might be a bit harder. As with anything, when you're creating stuff, there are periods where no matter how hard you work or how much you focus, things don't come together as easily as they may have in the past. And I think that this is clearly the case with someone like Stephen King. Few people would deny that he's a talented writer who makes more stuff than most people could ever dream of. And he's come out with some great stuff, like Misery, which is one of my favorite horror books ever. But he's also come out with some stuff that is widely considered mediocre, and some stuff that most would say is outright bad. 
Now, if you're considered great in your field, your career can usually withstand a few mistakes just because the good work you've done more than makes up for it and you've built an amount of goodwill with it. In fact, what I was just discussing earlier with how people are quick to forget about a lot of your work if you're prolific makes it easier for bad things to slip under the rug. You know, if you are someone like David Bowie and you put out masterpiece after masterpiece, then I can forgive you for putting out a less than perfect record. But the thing is that there are cases when this is not the case. There are cases when people have these long careers and then they produce something that is so bad that it is remembered and becomes a core part of their legacy. So 20 years ago, the biggest metal band of all time, Metallica, put out an album called Saint Anger, which is considered one of the worst records ever made. Now, is it really that bad? I don't think so, but most people do think that it is one of the worst records ever made. And so because of that, two decades after its release, people make fun of it. While I think most people probably think of their greatest works like Master Puppets, Saint Anger is just as easy to come up when you're discussing Metallica. Their legacy has been forever tarnished by that. And in this video, I'm only focused on the act of making art. I'm not even talking about how your actions outside of your work can affect your legacy, which is an entirely different issue. With Metallica, there are plenty of things that the band has said and done that have made people like them less. Same goes for Billy Corgan, same goes for Kanye West. And so I think that if someone has produced so much stuff over a large period of time, then they've likely gone through a few different phases of their career and have experimented with different sounds or ideas or thought processes behind the making of the art. And so I think it must be frustrating if you as an artist feel that you've done a lot of great work recently but you are only remembered for the work you did a long time ago. And I think if you are one of the creators, like I mentioned earlier, like if you're My Bloody Valentine, for instance, who has only put out three studio albums plus some EPs, I think if you're a band like that, where you have just a small amount of work, I think that if you release one bad thing, then that completely tanks you just because you don't have the goodwill that these prolific creators have. So as I've tried to make clear, I think there are two paths to greatness as a creator. I think there is the first path, the path of doing a small amount of work, but making it top-notch absolute quality masterpiece work. And there is the second way to be great, which is to be super productive, to put out a lot of stuff, and to just make a lot, to make as much as you can over a long period of time and hope that some of the stuff sticks. Hope that you have enough masterpieces in there to be remembered fondly. So if you are an aspiring creator and you want to be remembered as great, then what should you do? There's a story I heard years ago that I think about all the time, about a pottery class. And it's a well-known story, so forgive me if you've heard this one before. So in this story, there is a pottery class, and the teacher splits up the class into two groups. The teacher tells the two different groups that they will be graded on two different things. Group A will be graded on how good their pots are. In short, it doesn't matter if they make a hundred pots, if none of them are good. Because all they need is they need one good pot, and they get a good grade. But group two is going for quantity, so they have to make as many pots as possible. And it doesn't matter if their pots are good, it doesn't matter if their pots are bad. They just have to make as many as they can. And then at the end of the semester, whenever the class's pottery is all brought together and they're looking at who had the best pots, it turns out that group two, the group that made the most pots, had the best pots actually. They had not only the quantity, but they had the quality also. Because while the first group was focused on making one masterpiece, in one perfect pot, group two was just out here making pots. And so they learned how to do it and they learned how to get good at it. And they had a lot of practice. And so by the end, they were the better pot makers. And so I think the point of the story is really to dispel the idea that you can either have quality or quantity, because I think that's an idea that we see often that either you get quality or you get quantity. You either get one thing that is really great or you get four things that are kind of crappy. But really, I think that whenever you're doing any kind of creative work, you achieve quality through quantity. Whenever I first started writing creatively, I ended up spending two years on a single story and I didn't get anywhere with it. And so finally I got frustrated and I ended up writing just a single story that was much shorter in about a month. And I learned way more in that one month of writing that single story than I did in the two preceding years. And the reason why I learned more in that one month was because I was moving forward. Because in the two preceding years, I just kept on starting something and then I would throw it away. But the thing is, and I think you'll find this to be true if you are doing any kind of creative work, whether it's writing, whether it's making art, music, acting, directing, whether you're making YouTube videos, whether you have a podcast. I think that you will find that as you practice and as you make stuff, then you become better over time. And I think there is a sort of X factor when it comes to being considered great. And when I say that word great, I'm using it in the loosest sense possible. I'm talking about just perceived as great by society. And so I think in short that if your goal is to become great, I think if your goal is to become renowned and well-known, then all that you can really do is just make stuff and hope for the best. But ultimately, I don't think that you will find success 
by recording three records and then just breaking up your band. Because sure, there are people like Harper Lee who only wrote one book and called it a day, but there are way more people who wrote only one book and have been forgotten in the annals of history. And being prolific isn't a guarantee for success either. There are tons of people who have done huge amounts of work only to be forgotten as well. And so really, I think all you can do if you want to make good art is just make a lot of it. I think that if you want to become skilled at anything, then practice is needed. And so really, if you want to become great in your chosen field, if you want to be great at something, all you can do is just finish projects and put them out. So if you want to make a masterpiece, all that you can do is keep on trying. So let me know what you think down in the comments below, and um, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful night.